Good evening and welcome to Sons of God podcast, the School of Prophets and Seers, for a Saturday evening, the 12th of September. I hope all of you are well this evening, and for those that are able to make it, we greet you. We've been in the flow of something today uh, that just kind of came as we were driving along the freeway, Anna and I talking, and the Lord began to clarify a few things or remind us of a few things. But <clears throat> since we're in a school of prophets, we are going to try and just continue to broaden the tent pegs of our dwelling, expand our understanding and our horizon. We're going to talk about a scripture we've read many times, but we're going to look at it in a different perspective because <clears throat> it is at the key of our prevailing, both in the warfare and in the execution of the judgments and the will of God during this time. This is something that is not waiting for a day of maturing or, or anything else. This is something that uh, is something that we need to walk in right now. <clears throat> so Lord, we draw your anointing. Lord, you're doing a, a, a marvelous thing in your sons. Lord, continue to open our minds that we might be able to understand and comprehend the height and depth and the breadth of the kingdom. Because we know, Lord, that whatever we approach, if we approach it in our mind, we will not understand it. We may think we, we understand it, but it'll be far short of really what it can be. We know, Lord, the renewing of the mind is taking place. It's taking place daily. And we're expecting fruits daily as we are in this process of change. So, we thank you, Lord. I think we know what we want to talk about, but as always, Lord, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're just the errand boy here. We're going to talk out of Mark 12, verse 29, which is also repeated in the book of Mark 3, verse 27. Now this, I think, is a sleeper because we, we haven't realized how far-reaching the dynamics are of this word, of the scripture, how important it is and how much it lies at the very base of what we're trying to see accomplished during this time. But before we read it, I do want to add this. The only thing that really works, that really works, is when you're led by the Lord. Now you might say, well, of, of course, of course. But it's so easy to get into routines and not even realize that perhaps you're not really being led, more driven by your hunger, your drive, your, your earnest interest or whatever. But what really makes everything work is when God reveals it to you. 
and 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 that really doubles back to the word yesterday about seeing seeing the word seeing the lord in the word um so just as a um, a caveat or a, a preface know that what we're going to talk about isn't really going to work unless the Lord leads, unless the Lord illumines the situation, then you know what you need to do. It's not that every situation we enter, that we we deal with, uh, doesn't have real dynamics happening behind it. But we've got to be led now more than ever. So we're going to talk about <clears throat> Matthew 12. Let me go ahead and read this. How can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he can plunder his house? Now, in times past, we've looked at that scripture many different ways. One, of course, would have to do with evangelism. If you go to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, it says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Really, what we're dealing with here is understanding that to prevail in the warfare, to prevail in really anything that you do that God directs, it has to be preceded with an authority that is executed over the prevailing principality, power, throne, dominion, or demonic spirit before you can effectually, as the word says, plunder his house. And sometimes we don't, we haven't put that in proper perspective because if you go in the book of Revelation, it talks about how we prevail and they overcame by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And, and, and that, that's true. But I believe that there's part of that equation that we haven't really seen in its correct perspective or relationship to that scripture in the book of Revelation. And it has to do with taking dominion, with taking authority. Um, so often, as we were talking today, there were some things that had to be taken care of. And of course, the answer is, all right, we, we take dominion. We were in our time of intercession and prayer. All right, we need to take dominion over this. We need to take dominion over this. And the Lord then spoke and Anne said, well, wait a second. We need to bind the strong man here. It happened to be dealing with individuals. And the strong man was that which was blinding them from being able to see, from being able to hear. And, and, and you could say, well, who, who is that strong man? Well, in this case, it would be the satanic spirit world that literally is the God of this age, that literally at this point controls the hearts and minds of men and women across the globe. I mean, we're in a time of vast darkness and it's getting greater. And people are not seeing. And the few that think they see, their arrogance has pretty much canceled that out. And so the warfare of the saints during this time is really multi-pronged. You're dealing with the principalities and powers, thrones and dominions. 
that are governing this present age under Satan. And they are manipulating the minds and hearts of people through the media, through TV, any number of venues. And it's very far reaching. And so as the sons begin to move in to take the kingdom, to begin to execute the judgments written, literally to begin to plunder the strong man's house, there has to first be a binding of that. You don't go into Satan's kingdom or what has been his kingdom and just, you know, think you're just going to plunder his house, evangelize the word, have the word. I mean, people are out there evangelizing. People are out there doing whatever, you know, and, and, and they think that, that it's gaining any ground. These churches that have thousands of people and they're just, it's a, it's a, it's a mockery before God. And, and these people that are sitting there listening, they, they don't have a shot in the dark of getting anything because there's no authority that's really opening the door for people to begin to experience the Lord on a level that will change them. But the thing of it here is and we were talking about habits. We were talking about uh, getting into routines uh, and how easy it is for the human nature to get into a routine where maybe at first that routine has the presence of God, but after a while, if you don't watch it, that routine just becomes something you do by rote and you don't even realize that it's lost something in the execution. And that's why it's, it's so critical on everything that we do from this point on. We have to be led. And I mean, we're, we have to capitalize that and underscore it. We have to be led. And before we begin to go, go in and take dominion, you know, uh, or, or prophesy releases and changes or whatever it is the Lord wants to speak, first the strong man has to be bound. And that involves the prevailing spirits involved with given situations. It's like a comment that was made many years ago. And we were, we were in a, a call, a discussion, talking about illness and the validity of illness. And people, you know, have this thing about sickness and illness and cancer and, you know, all of these things. And, and they're so valid. And you say, well, how can you, how can you say that's an illusion? That isn't. I'm dying. You know, whatever. But what people don't realize, 90%. I would say maybe even 95% of all illness is really born out of transference. And so people are ill because they, well, I, many different reasons within their own personal makeup, but it's not valid. And there's so much transference that people live under that they don't understand. That's why we've talked about bonds for so long, because bonds are the perfect storm for the transference of negative energy, of, of one person's problem to another. Uh, you know, and uh, people are still struggling on really understanding it, I think because it hasn't become real enough firsthand. So it's still a little bit of a con concept until you really experience it 
you know, and, and, and get yourself knocked off your feet and, and, and you wake up and realize, hey, wait a second, you know, I, I'm missing something here. But this issue of binding the strong man is so important because everything that we do, in fact, it, it reminds me of something the Lord was talking to us about 15 years ago. We were working on some things that needed a breakthrough. And we were approaching it, well, on whatever level. And the Lord said, okay, you prevail, not by your expertise, your knowledge, your abilities, your marketing, your whatever. You will not prevail that way. You will prevail only one way, through the word you speak. And I would add an addendum to that. But before you exercise authority or judgment upon that which opposes and oppresses, you need to know exactly what needs to be bound. You need to bind the strong man. And that doesn't always apply every time. That's why the Lord has to leave. Because there are some situations that uh, there are other dynamics involved. And so you just can't you know, make a an assumption on everything that has an impasse. Well, we're just going to bind the strong man. It doesn't work unless the Lord reveals it to you. It's like, well, I, I'll recount something that happened, what, 35 years ago. We were in a time of ministry to some of the people. And some of the ministries got up there and and they were prophesying uh, to the person, and nothing was happening. And then one humble uh, young man uh, discerned it, had the word, knew exactly what the Lord wanted to say, and he just spoke it. And everything changed. It wasn't the high-powered ministries and all their prophesying. It was just someone that had discernment, spoke a word right into it, and it all changed. And so the correlation is just that we need to begin to bind the strong man. We need to plunder his house. And a great deal of what we're going to be dealing with and are dealing with are issues that have withstood the changes have withstood uh, the execution of authority because we haven't bound the strong, bound the strong man first. Um, and here again, this is something that you do by revelation. You could say, well, how is binding the strong man any different than just taking dominion? Well, in some ways, they overlap quite a bit. But binding the strong man is very specific. And it pertains to something that is happening right then, right there. And God reveals it. And you may not even know the name of the spirit. That's not really even necessary. The main thing is you know that you exercise an authority that binds the strong man. You visualize it, you see it as you do it. Then you can plunder the house. You know, if you're believing for daughters, sons, loved ones, whatever, and you're praying for them, well, the answer, first of all, is you have to bind the strong man that has blinded their minds and hearts from being able to hear. Then you can speak to them. Then you can go before God, whatever. Then it becomes, you, you, you actually got a shot at it. But you've got to know what you're doing. And as the sons of God continue to emerge into their place of authority, they are going to know more and more what they're doing how they accomplished it. 
It's not going to be a, a shotgun effect where, well, I think it worked. I just kind of just, sh you know, aimed a shotgun and shot it in the air and I hit something. So all of a sudden something's working. That's not really going to work. God's going to, to reveal to you this needs to be bound. You need to bind the strong man here. And then, as you begin to plunder his house, that can have a lot of different um, uh, meanings, whether it's the ability to impart and to bring a word to someone that will be able to change them, or whether or not that will open a door that has been closed in that house. And all of a sudden, you are then shown the various spirits and hierarchy that have been behind closed doors hidden. And then you can begin to exercise real dominion. It's like a two-step process. You can say, well, I'm just going to take dominion you know, over this general situation. A lot of times you won't even get in the house. But once you take the strong man out, then you get access. And then that's when things really get revealed. So, you know, for us, for the sons, partially effective doesn't work. Um, this has to be the day of full release and fullness. And we have to be able to see what we're doing and understand how we did it because we're going to have to walk in this principle more and more but it cannot become a habit it has to always be something that god reveals because when he reveals it you're empowered to move accordingly if he doesn't reveal it then you just you have to leave it alone until he speaks so i think that's pretty much uh, this is just a short word for a saturday evening but it's extremely important. Uh, like the word last night, hopefully the Lord will give us another opportunity to delve more deeply into this. But this whole principle of binding the strong man is so important as we move forward with every situation we're dealing with. You know, um, and even though it seems to have some similarity to just taking dominion, it really doesn't. It, it really doesn't. I mean, I can look at a half a dozen scenarios going on, and we need to see certain answers. And you can just say, well, I just take dominion. Unless God gives you some, some names and some absolute clarity, it's not going to really do too much until you first take dominion over the strong man, over that which is controlled, then you have access into the house. Then you can begin to clean house. And whatever those spoils are, they belong to you. And, and so much of what we're dealing with, you know, has been hidden. The spirit world, their strong suit is the ability to stay hidden and to have you believe that something is when it is not. That's where they're effective. Their, their ability to hide, hide behind issues or events, you name it. But as long as they can be stay hidden and you don't see the operation of the spirit behind it and you just think you're dealing with this or that, then they, they succeed. And they've had a long time to perfect their ability to hide. And as we move to really bind the strong man, it will begin to open the doors to a house where there's been a great deal hiding behind closed doors. And you'll have access to begin to take it out. I mean, start looking at the things you face differently. 
just besides praying about it or maybe a general take dominion, begin to look at it from the perspective that you've got to bind the strong man. And there is a strong man behind most everything that we're dealing with. And it's hiding. And as long as you don't see it, the transference that is brought against the saints can continue. Well, I think that's about what we'll cover this evening. You know, I'll just read this again. How can anyone enter the strong man's house, whether that be people that we're trying to reach on the face of the earth or houses that we're trying to gain access to to really get to that which is behind the scenes, any of that. How can they enter a strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. This is a new phase of administering authority. And even though we may have known the scripture before, it just sheds a little different light and a little different perspective that as we move forward, we we add this element into our awareness because the enemy is not going to continue to be able to hide behind closed doors or smoke screen everything until you don't realize what you're dealing with. This is a time of unveiling and exposing. It's a time that that which has been hidden is brought to the light. And that was a promise that came some months ago. That which is hidden is being brought to the light. Anne and I thank you for joining us this evening. And um, we will be working on another book. Uh, it'll be uh, a school of prophets. It'll be book five. It might be a while before it's ready. Um, if any of you want to contribute to uh, either the cost of the podcast or the, uh, the equipment that we need or uh, some of the conversion services and transcribing services, you're welcome to do so. Uh, I know the Lord will provide for us. Um, it's more, we've had a lot of people ask, what can we do? And there isn't really a lot uh, that, uh, that we need help with. Uh, but um, if you feel led to give, um, you can do that. Um, I believe uh, our mailing address is at the website. So we send our blessing, and we will talk with all of you again soon. Amen. <laughs>